Hi, my name is Ahmed. I'm a research scientist at our lab. We have just released IO Vision, which is a multimodal language model that can understand images and respond in 23 languages. So here we gather with the, the team that built IO Vision and we want to talk about it. So first I would like to actually set the stage before going into details, right? So I know our lab is works based on long-term research agenda and very ambitious research path. And the multimodal is one of these bets. Why it is? Well, if multimodal, if we kind of go back to what our field is built around, this idea of building intelligent machines, the first convening for AI in the 1950s always thought of it as separate subjects. So there was computer vision, there was audio, uh, there was text. And that's largely because each task was so difficult. It was kind of unimaginable that you could tackle all of them at the same time. This moment is very profound because, as you're describing, we now have this moment where the amount of compute power and the ability to model general representations means we can finally address these together. But it matters because our own intelligence is so multimodal. So if you think about how we navigate the world, or even the fact that we manage to get up on these stools, <laughs> like that is very much because of our ability to orientate, to use a combination of vision and language and uh, auditory coordination to be able to decide and have a level of certainty about our environment. So that's what makes IO Vision, but also this era of AI really special and profound for our ability to model the world as it is and not a fractured kind of partial vision of the world. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Also, like if we think about these AI models, I mean, uh, the level of intelligence is really how comprehensive it understands our world, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I think it's unimaginable to thinking just with the text domain that we need to incorporate all the domains that we have. Mm -hmm. and that's a super interesting research question. But now I want to come to you, Beza, as a senior researcher in our team. So we always care about, of course, super interesting research questions. But also, now we are in an era that whatever we build gets adapted extremely quick. Why this is important to build a multimodal model for, for the community? To me, the most important aspect of this, uh, this project is to make the multimodal accessible in anywhere on Earth. So, because uh, one of the biggest vision of our lab is to make AI uh, accessible anywhere and it can't be only made with the language models because images also captures lots of uh, cultural nuances. We, for example, travel around the world and go somewhere and we see something and don't have any cl clue about it and there's no text. Even there's text, we don't understand what's written there and we can just use our camera on the phone and just check what it is and ask to our model and it can give us some information about what it sees there. I think that's pretty exciting as a vision uh, for our lab. And as a research project, there are so many challenges that probably we will dive, uh, dive deep <laughs> in the rest of the conversation. And it's also like, as a researcher, it's also very interesting as a project. I think that's also fun because that hits on why we focused on releasing such an accessible seven billion parameter model. This is much more compact and hopefully usable right. as well. So yeah. really nice. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you gave me the perfect pass because, I mean, we want to build such a I mean, model that is very accessible, which is also required. Like I was talking with my mom after we released IA Expense, they use in WhatsApp, but like she was asking, can I send a photo? Like, I was a bit shy to say, like, not yet, but <laughs> now she can. <laughs> so, but this, this comes with the challenges, right? Because it's really challenging machine learning problem. Yes. So I would like to come to you, Sarah. So you are a research engineer that worked on this from the beginning. So how different it is from building a text on the language model to multimodal language model? <laughs> it was harder than I anticipated, to be honest. Um, some of the systems, uh, when, you, when you work with text, because text is such lightweight, uh, you can get away with like, um, like not optimizing it and like writing some, like taking the easy way out. But with multimodal, uh, what happens is because like images and, like, and videos, if you move to other modalities, they are, they are so heavy in, in terms of processing that you really write, need to write like very good systems to kind of train and infer these. So I think that was like been, has been the most challenging part for me. Yeah. So the, the infrastructure that is uh, ready for 
training a text only language models is not enough to train a multi model. <laughs> is that rem- correct? Yeah, not even remotely. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. I mean, we know as a machine learning people, without infrastructure, we cannot do anything. That's super, super important. Yeah. So, Oliver, you are, you are a research scholar in our lab. So, you are relatively junior. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, and this is really ambitious research, right? Yeah. So, when you started and what were you thinking how it would be working in multimodal project and how do you feel now? Yeah, it's a very exciting opportunity, especially like I, before I only have a rough idea how like how like model training gonna look like. Mostly like the idea I read from paper or my uh, school project in the during my studies. Uh, but I, for this project, I feel like pr- especially privileged and lucky to have the chance to participate in an end-to-end project, uh, model training project. Like uh, not everyone has that kind of opportunity. Um, so. Another thing that is really uh, nice about IOVision is it is multilingual. It can respond to uh, any question in 23 languages. So this is also really nice because it's connected to IA movement, right? And this is something that our lab, I think, proudly kind of established. So why multilinguality is such an important and such also challenging kind of research direction? So IOVision is part of a wider commitment that we're doing, which is how do we expand frontier technology to serve the world. We're covering 23 languages, which is half the world's population. And this already is incredibly technically challenging because a few components. One is the sheer curse of multilinguality. So when we add languages, we typically have to do bigger is better scaling, uh, which to Sarah's point of the infrastructure required and just the dimensionality of what we're processing as data, This adds a lot of complexity. But the second is images, more than anything else, differ around the world. So we are actually, I think, all from different places. So um, I think Ahmed Beza, you're from Turkey. Oliver is joining us, he's from China. So I am from Ireland, I live in the US. And then Saurabh is in India. So these are all very different worlds. And like, how do we represent the complexity of languages in those worlds? For me, this is actually core to machine learning. I think, Ahmed, you and I have talked about this a lot, but this is core to how do you adapt large models to new distributions? And how do you make sure that, it, that we do this in a way that's efficient, that's performant, and that we are representing the worlds that we, we serve when we share these models? I think, I mean, this is such a nice, also research battlefield because so, I do like you call it battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, I mean, there are more, more than one objective that we need to mm-hmm. reach, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I want to come to you, uh, Beza. So m- multilinguality itself, as just Sarah mentioned, is an optimization problem because there is lots of uh, languages and there is limited capacity, but it is required for accessibility. But now we have also another modality, vision and text. And with, for the IO vision, one of the, the target from the beginning for, for our lab, keeping, having, having really good performance for uh, vision, visual understanding, but also maintain the textual performance. So now we have three different objectives that we want to combine. So what do you say about this challenge? Yeah, when you asked the question to Sarap about how it's different than building a language model, I was thinking it's like multi-objective optimization problem and it's like multi-multi-objective optimization problem and it's really hard. Uh, the Actually, difficulty starts with the data because even for the language model, it's really difficult to uh, source data for all these 23 languages. Some languages are really underrepresented. And regarding that multi-model data uh, collection, it's like maybe not two times, but five times more difficult because there is almost no data available that captures all these cultural nuances and aligns with the text comes with it. So that was the most difficult part for our uh, project, I can say. Also, like uh, keeping the text performance high and keeping the English performance high and Chinese performance high, that was another challenge you shouldn't forget what your model learned before when you are doing this multi-objective training. Um, And maybe other thing, you need to maximize the cross-lingual transfer for this case, because for some languages, you won't have maybe very limited amount of data only, and you need to uh, teach your model uh, to answer um, 
properly for these languages. I think one thing that's super nice that you touch upon, and I want to continue a bit more, the data. So it is very challenging machine learning problem in terms of optimization, but today all frontier models starts with the high quality data. I know Oliver, like one of maybe every day to day job, uh, thing that you do, look at the data, the prompts, yeah. completions, images, try to understand, try to estimate the quality. Yeah. So when you start, how was the quality that is available in public domain for this project? Yeah, for the, uh, most of the image text here, we saw today, like those are all academic benchmark. Those are very short and concise answer, but that's not what we want from an AI model. Human usually prefer longer answer that explain your answer, not just one shot like ladder options from the questions. So, so that's the main challenge we have. So for this project, we need to like recaption the data set to make it more human preferred, more natural, more like, a, like more human preferred. Mm -hmm. It might <laughs> add, uh, also, one of the major sources of multimodal data on the internet are like image and alt caption pairs, and those are very, very noisy. And if you use that to kind of train your model, it, it wouldn't understand all the nuances and like the correlations really well. So it, a lot of effort from our end was put on actually like cleaning the data and making sure it is rep representative of what the model would actually see in, in, real, in the real world and real world use cases. So I think that has been one of the fundamental uh, what do you say, innovations that we've kind of focused on. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty interesting because uh, almost like two years ago, we released IO 101, mm -hmm. a text on the language model, and we, ha we had exactly the same discussion about the data. There were data that is very benchmark oriented, uh, very short uh, form completions. And now we are in two years later, we are building a multi multimodal model and we have the same problem, which is yeah. sort of interesting, but yeah, solving this is one of the gist uh, to get the performance. I totally agree with that. So, uh, sort of, I want to continue about this. Uh, so, th throughout the development phase of IA Vision, did you have, did, did you see, or did you observe any surprising findings or sort of innovation that you did not expect actually in the beginning? I think the most surprising part for me was uh, from uh, using our approach, getting a decent model was surprisingly easy. Getting a very good model was surprisingly hard. <laughs> so how do you actually bridge that gap from going from like a decent model to a very good model, which actually makes the makes the real impact in like when people use a, use it and it actually gives them the delight that they're looking for. Um, in, in that aspect, I would say the one of the harder problems that we are trying to solve is keep the extremely good text performance that IX Expands had. And uh, one of the things that we did not want to compromise on is was our text performance. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I expense is is a really good model. I mean, I I, I just realized that when I was working on <laughs> continuing to it, preserve adapt, it. <laughs> adapting it to like new modalities. Uh, it was it was hard to beat it. So um, we, we we experimented with a bunch of ideas. We tried adding a lot of text data to kind of preserve the distribution, and it, we always saw a degradation. And then we, uh, Amit and I, we were discussing one fine day, like, you know, what, what if we try to merge models trained with, on different modalities? It was kind of a wild idea, but it worked. So, and then we kind of ran with it and kind of ran experiments with it to kind of improve it even further. So that, that was a very fun moment in like the research journey for our vision, I would say. That was also very surprising for me. I'm sorry, Clara. <laughs> like also how we get like a test it out. Okay, we had this half day that uh, like we can spare for some implementation. Okay, let's test it out. Yeah, this is really yeah, just uh, Yeah, it was super interesting. Right. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, so I actually think that was fantastic because I remember the update the next day and you're like, oh, this is incredible. <laughs> we, we ran the benchmark yeah. multiple times to yeah, make so sure check, it wasn't yeah. wrong. Um, but I, you know, it's interesting. I think there's another aspect to this which was really hard with this project, which was, what is our North Star? Because there's there's a lot of academic benchmarks for multimodal, but multimodal is actually, there's not as much work on how do we actually measure where we want to go. And so Oliver spent a huge amount of time preparing an evaluation set, which we're releasing along with I am uh, vision, and I think this is worth talking about because it's measuring more open-ended problems. Yeah. yeah, well, most of the like, benchmark accurate measures the accuracy, but when people use a the model, they don't, people don't care about, not say don't care about accuracy, 
they more care about the response they got. They want like a really they want the model to really understand their questions and give more like a fluent human preferred nat nature natural res response. So we built a win rate benchmark to to make out to evaluate our model if the model is like really giving response that's more is better and preferred by humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are a major <coughs> problem with like the, the multimodal benchmarks that we have recently is even if you have an extra like comma or a full stop yeah. and it does like this exact string matching and it'll tag it as zero and if it asks for the time if 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 you say the answer is like 4:20 p.m. over like 16:20 which is like like you say in like military time that's also marked wrong. I mean, it's correct. But this is a wider <laughs> crisis with our evaluation, I it think. Just and more and more, we want to, exactly what you're saying, Oliver, just capture the essence yeah. of where we actually want to go with yeah. artificial intelligence. Because our whole goal here is to create true intelligence. And so I think part of that is creating evaluations that capture that. Actually, that was, so I'm, I'm going to ask this to the Beza, but my aha moment in the project was exactly this. Like, we were checking the benchmarks. I mean, I was surprised, like how limited it can be, and it is extremely limited. And I mean, your your work is really, really yeah, important yeah. in this uh, building this evaluation. Maybe Beza, I can. Okay. What is your aha moment? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I can add mine. <laughs> um, yeah, after creating this benchmark uh, with, with Oliver, um, we were almost checking all the answers in also our languages, not only in English, but uh, Oliver was checking in Chinese, I was checking in Turkish, and. I was so shocked that the answers are so good. So oh. I couldn't <laughs> believe because we are generally used to like use models and which is uh, good in English, right? So it's not so surprising. A model can perform really well in English, uh, but when it performs really well in, in your language, which is just used in your own country, it's really both, I mean, you, you really feel proud at that moment and you get happy that what you worked on and what you achieved. That's great. So it was, it's a super nice discussion. I would like to close slowly now, but just a closing and <laughs> closing question. And like, a, I would like to be a, a really brief. So what do you think now we have a vision? What is next that we should go forward? Mm -hmm. I think um, modalities are really important. We started with image, but I think we should expand the modalities we cover so probably video uh, should be the next, I would say. As, a, as like a youngest member of our team, <laughs> Oliver, what do you say? I would think like a more fine grained understanding of images and uh, like, like let's say multimodal model can really help your daily task mm -hmm. for like more deeper understanding of those documents. Those like daily tasks, they can really be like an aid to your daily life. So do you have an answer? I think it is. It has to be definitely speech. If, if the next modality we would be adding, uh, because I, I think the, one of the core ideas is to make this model more accessible, right? And if we are, ta to, are we, if we are targeting people who uh, who know language, which are in like the tail end of the distribution, uh, it's most people like like a significant chunk of that population does not know how to actually does not know to like read or write the language. They know how to speak the language. So if you are able to like point and ask questions and then get a response back, that is like a magical experience, I would say. And that, I think that is the kind of intelligence systems we should be like moving uh, towards. What does Sarah think? I think you said it well. That was amazing. <laughs> that, was, that was perfect. I mean, uh, I really enjoyed discussing with you, with you all guys. So thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you. Amit. Thank you, Ahmed.